I turn my thoughts within, dear Lord, for here is where you dwell, in your kingdom nestled in my heart, where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace, harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth, there is one, the all in all, the truth that makes me free to be. I heed its every call. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find his me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that his spirit expressed. I find his me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that his spirit Wow. I'm always uplifted by the strains of that beautiful song by practitioner Steve Golding. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lifeline. This is the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. I am practitioner Sandra Cooper, and it is my absolute joy to welcome each and every one of you here this evening. We have, and we are promising you an hour of connectivity, liberty, love, and laughter as we discuss matters pertaining to, you know, different aspects of our lives. And this evening, we will be talking about how the science of mind has made a difference in the life of our very special guest. And I'll tell you about her in a little bit. But as we begin all things at the Temple of Light, I would just like to now uh, introduce our pastor, Reverend John Scott, who will lead us in the opening affirmative prayer. Reverend John. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. And it's a joy to add my own words of welcome to our worldwide spiritual family. Welcome to the Temple of Light Lifeline in beautiful Jamaica. We begin as all things begin with God. Please join me in this opening affirmative prayer. As Steve said in his beautiful song, we go within and open our consciousness to the inflow of the divine spirit, which is already within each and every person who is tuned into this moment in this which we call lifeline. And so we fill the space between us with the love and the joy and the laughter and the liberty of the living spirit almighty. Cause there is nowhere upon the face of the globe where God is not. And we know that our special guest is a vehicle and an instrument through which that spirit expresses this evening to inspire and to uplift and to touch us with her own beautiful, gentle spirit and each person participating 
can sense and feel and know that presence and hear that still small voice which bids us be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. This word is released to law in thanksgiving for its perfect fulfillment as our hearts sing a song of praise and a psalm of thanksgiving that this is already so. And together we say, and so, and it, so is. it is. Thank you so much, Reverend John. You know, this evening as we were preparing for Lifeline, I, I looked through the window and I saw the entire sky just tinged with pink. It's mm. a beautiful sunset. And we've had an after, afternoon of torrential rain and I know that has blessed our land and in that space of beauty and you know we see God's nature just expressing like a kaleidoscope across across the heavens I'm going to now welcome our guest and she and you know you know by now it's a she she's chairman and executive director of RISE Life Management Services an NGO that began in 1990 as Addiction Alert Organization. That was Jamaica's very first outpatient treatment program for addictive disorders. In 1993, her passion for this work led her to graduate studies at Johns Hopkins University, where she focused on policy development and management of health services with emphasis on substance abuse policy, prevention and treatment. On returning home, she guided Addiction Alert to expand into community development with a focus on at-risk adolescents, youth and parents. To reflect this, the name Addiction Alert was changed to RISE, reaching individuals through skills and education. Her work has had such powerful impact on vulnerable populations in Jamaica that in 2010, she received the Because You Care Award by the Kiwanis Club of New Kingston and the Individual Wellness and Lifestyle Award for Excellence. And that was in 2012 by the Environmental Health Foundation of Jamaica. This was for her Oh, sorry, this was her outstanding contribution to the promotion of wellness and healthy lifestyles in Jamaica. In 2017, she was awarded the national honor of the Order of Distinction for Leadership in Community Development, Youth Employment, and the Development of Comprehensive Services for Persons Afflicted with Addictive Disorders. Friends, she's a certified yoga and Pilates teacher, and she owns Afya Yoga and Pilates Student Ligani. She has been an active and committed member of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have an amazing guest with us this evening, and I'm going to ask you to open your hearts and just welcome Mrs. Sur Sunita Morin for us. Sonita, it is a joy and a pleasure to have you. Welcome. Thank you very much, Sandy. And thanks for that introduction. Okay, am I on? Shall I continue? You are on. It's all yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to begin by just um, letting you know where and when my spiritual journey really began. So I remember as a young 19-year-old secretary at Pan American, I looked across at the CEO in his big office and decided that I wanted to be a boss. I wanted to be a leader and not a secretary. And the seed was planted. Fast mm -hmm. forward to a Sunday approximately 30 years ago when I attended my first Sunday morning service at the Temple of Light with Reverend Elmer. Her message so resonated with my soul that I knew I had found my spiritual home. Oh. I began taking evening classes and clearly remember, recall when Reverend Elma taught us about spiritual mind treatments and how they worked. I was fascinated. So she said, so if you want a new car, et cetera, et cetera. So I raised my hand and asked, well, I'd love to have a new car, but I don't have a dollar in the bank for this new car. 
My dear, she said, you deserving and getting a new car has nothing to do with whether you have oh, money yeah. in the bank or not. Oh, Say what? <laughs> I like this law of attraction. I was very interested. I was hooked. So a month later, when I drove out of the showroom with a brand new silver blue Hyundai, this was in 1990. This was my first significant demonstration of how spiritual mind treatment and the law of attraction work. Wow. So that, and that was a significant demonstration, you must admit, and not a dime out of my pocket. So in preparation for this evening's talk, I thought about the significant milestones along my spiritual path, and I'd like to share some of them with you. One morning in early 1990, as I was driving to my office at Inks and Paints, Jamaica, a manufacturing business that I operated, I had a conversation with God. I asked to be guided to what my life's purpose was, as it was surely not running an ink and paint manufacturing business. Of that, I was sure. Within a week or two, I got a call. A drug treatment program called Addiction Alert was being op opened, and they were looking for an administrator. I applied. I got an interview, I got the job, and told my directors at Inks and Paints, goodbye. AAO opened its doors in September of 1990, that's 31 years ago. And within three months, I was appointed the executive director. Mm. And by the way, this also happened at Inks and Paints. In the case of Addiction Alert, the executive director unfortunately had a relapse. In the case of Inks and Paints Jamaica, the general manager I caught stealing when I'd been there just about six weeks. So it certainly wasn't by choice, but the universe said, this is what you want. You're gonna get it and you're gonna get it fast. So, and at that time, even though I was a trained psychologist, I really didn't know anything about addiction, but you know, the heavens opened, universe said, it's okay, we're gonna train you. We're gonna give the people to help you. And so it happened. I pause here a moment to discuss how and why did this happen? Was this luck? Was this coincidence? None of the above. It took courage. It took faith. It took conviction. It took mm -hmm. confidence. And it took paying attention to the signs because God always sends us the signs. But we need to be aware and we need to pay attention. Over the past 45 years, um, I've taken many workshops. I've read many self-help books, many spiritual books, attended many classes at the Temple of Light. There are no shortcuts, folks. We have to do the work. At age 25, I, yeah, we know that. We've got to do the work. At age 25, I was a physical and emotional wreck, which led to a bad car accident, which could have taken my life. But I had two small children and a husband working really hard to make ends meet. So I decided to live. I decided to change my diet to become a practice of meditation. I started taking yoga classes. I healed my injuries with the help of self-hypnosis and I embarked on my wellness journey. My journey to become a yoga teacher began at the temple actually when um, <laughs> I was taking classes right there at the temple and I was asked instead to lead a class because the instructor at the time wasn't feeling well. Of course, you know, as anybody else would say, I went, me? No way, I can't. But of course I could. And the students helped me. And so, you know, the idea of becoming a teacher was in my head. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to a couple months later, when I was walking around the dam, I met up with another yoga teacher, Sharon McConnell. And she had a friend walking with her, introduced her to me and said, you know, Jenny's going to become a yoga teacher. She's going to Massachusetts in a couple of months time. And I said, really, can I come too? So of course she said, yes. I wasn't concerned at the time about where the money would come from mm. a month away from home at great expense. It just felt right and everything fell into place. So <laughs> you see, I learned very well from Reverend Elmer. The opportunity door opened effortlessly and I walked through. My love affair with yoga was now set in stone. That was August of 2000. I remember the date well because I had just returned to Jamaica after my uh, teacher training. 
and my beloved brother Clive Anthony died suddenly of a brain hemorrhage at age 49. I was mm. 48. My yoga experience prepared me so well to deal with the tragedy of his death. I think that I managed it much better than um, those around me simply because um, of the strength of the, of the, that spiritual strength that came from my training as a yoga teacher, but also from the Temple of Light that there's really no death. In 2003, my daughter and son-in-law returned from Africa to Jamaica and they would come to my yoga classes right there at the Temple of Light and they fell in love. My son-in-law fell in love with a yoga practice. And so he became a yoga teacher and himself, my daughter, we became Pilates teachers and Afia was built. Afia was a great gift for me. However, they decided to get married and go back to Africa on their honeymoon, came back home and said, mom, guess what? We're moving back to Africa. And I went, holy cow, what am I going to do with, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm very sorry, I'm on my phone, folks. Oops. Okay, so uh, we seem to have, oh, she's sorry, back. On my phone. All right, awesome. Oh, came in. Very yes. sorry, yeah. Yes, yes, you are telling us about um, when your daughter uh, decided to move back to Africa. Yes, exactly. And so at first, you know, I was, oh my God, what am I going to do with second, the second business? But of course, it was one of probably one of the greatest gifts that I've ever been given. So I'm going to pause here again and mention some of the important things that I've learned at the Temple of Light. Examining my race beliefs. Where did the idea that I had to work hard to make a living come from? The idea that money doesn't grow on trees. Why did I feel the, name to, the need to be an overachiever, a superwoman? Where did that all come from? What are my insecurities? Where, where did the, um, yeah, the, the, the healing process, I realized that for me, I had to do inner child work. And that came from Louise Hay. And I worked with Louise Hay's books and her videos for years um, and that's where the whole healing of the inner child for me came from it's really important to, to get to the bottom of the belief systems that we have so that we can heal it and move forward um, well you mentioned about the Hubert Humphrey fellowship that was another that was a miracle I was actually sitting in my office at addiction alert one day and in walked Wendell Abel, and he just threw a piece of paper on my desk, and on my desk, and he said, "Apply for this fellowship." And when I looked at it, I went, "Oh, come on, Wendell, I can't do this." Well, I did it, and I was awarded the fellowship, but I was an alternate candidate. And so I got a call one day from U.S. Embassy, and they said, "By the way, um, do you live alone? Do you have children at home? Blah blah blah." Okay, bye. And I put down the phone, and I thought, "How oh, weird." Anyway, then they called me back and said, well, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that you've gotten the Hubert Humphrey Fellowship. The bad news is if you have to leave within one week. So I called a board meeting. My board of directors at Addiction Alert gave me the time off. Not only they gave me the time off, but they agreed to give me part of my salary while I was away. So I ended up being at university with both my children who were also at university and I was able to help them um, to help support them through university because it was a really good scholarship. And that was an absolute miracle. Wow. Because guys, I have to tell you, I, I really, I know I'm smart, but the folks that I had to be with at Johns Hopkins University were at a whole different level, but God is good. I've never prayed so hard in my life. Uh, <laughs> not, only did I, not only did I, you know, complete my one year as a Hubert Humphrey Fellow, but I went back for a second scholarship so I could get my master's degree. And when I went into the USAID office in Jamaica and I said, I need another scholarship, they said, absolutely not. We never give two scholarships. Well, you know, you know, I, for me, I don't take no for an answer. So I got That's my right. second scholarship. So, you know, um, again, a lot of it is about it's about having the courage. It's about having the faith. 
the confidence. It's so many things. It's about not accepting no as an answer when you know that you want something really badly in your heart and it feels right. Absolutely. Sanita, you mentioned faith twice. And I want yes. to ask you, do yes. you ever question your faith? Never. Never. Wonderful. Wonderful. Never, ever. Never. So, so my, my follow up question is, how do you yes. lead your thoughts into the higher realms of consciousness where your soul recognizes its own I amness? And, yes. and you know, how do you remind yourself that you are more than human, that you are divine? Well, um, I meditate every day. Absolutely. And so my morning begins with prayer, meditation, and breath work. Beautiful. And so I believe that that, it, you know, it was the teachings of the temple that taught me that God lives within. And I must say that having been brought up as a Roman Catholic, that was not easy for me at first mm -hmm. because, you know, we're taught that God is this little guy up there in the heavens. And so when I first tried to wrap my head around this idea that God lives within and that we're all one, it was not easy. But when I got it, I got it. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, that's what it really is to know that yep. we are one that I am part of that incredibly wonderful, powerful, loving um, force. Presence, yes, and force. And presence. Therefore, nothing is impossible. And um, I think, I have to tell you, I, 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 you know, I've delved into many things and having done um, some regressions, I, I've been through the death experience and, and along with the teachings of the temple, I know there is no death. And once there's you know no that death. there's no death, then there no, there's no reason to fear. So I don't, all my fears went away. If I ever had, had any, they went away. Because if you don't fear death, then what is there to fear? So I must say that I don't believe I had any fears. Even with COVID-19, um, I believe that I am protected from it. But I also believe that if I were to get it, I would be absolutely fine. Now, along with all of that, so let me go to this. Again, we talked about me doing the work. It's about the holistic role though. It's about being healthy. It's about a healthy lifestyle, eating a good diet. It's about the whole, the prayer, the spiritual, walking spiritual path. So, you know, it's not by magic. We have to walk the walk. We can't just talk the talk. So I remember a few years later doing the passion test at the Temple of Light with Ms. Terry. And what came out at the top of my list was that I wanted more downtime in nature. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. I would never have thought that would have been my number one. So a couple of weeks later, I heard a friend talking about this piece of land up in the Blue Mountains. And so I said to him, let's go look at it. <laughs> we looked at it. I said, you know, this is pretty cool. There was a river running below it. Anyway, the long and short of it is I decided to buy it. It was at a really good price. I took out all my savings that I had been saving from yeah. my, <laughs> for my old age, right? For my pension, because I don't get a pension at rise. <laughs> I bought the land and I built my little cottage called Cloud Nine. So again, was that luck? Was that just being in the right place at the right time? It was about courage and the conviction because it felt right. So I prayed about it. I asked God, I said, look, if this is not meant for me, because this is a big step here, I'm using up all my savings. If this is not meant for me, then put some barriers in my way. There were no barriers. <laughs> Again, he just opened the door and said, walk through. This is meant for you. This is yours. So fast forward, and that, that little cottage has brought me many, many years of, of just joy. But then, you know, I met this special man in my life, and um, I would spend much more time up by him. So I decided it was time to let go of Cloud9. And I recently sold it. And now, you know, that is, I've gotten back my pension money and prepared me for the next phase of my life, which is semi-retirement. 
So I want to mention before we open it up, you know, one more other really important milestone. Um, and this was about when I decided I really wanted a, a love partner in my life. So I wrote my list, you know, like we all do. We write all these wonderful lists with all these wonderful things that we want. But then I decided it was time to let go of the list and just be the person that I wanted to attract it to my life. And I think that's really important, right? So I just prepared myself for him. I paid, prepared myself mentally, spiritually, you know, and then I left it. Then I said, God, it's now in your hands. You know, when, when, he's, when it's time for him to appear, he will. And I didn't worry about it. I didn't think about it anymore. I went about my business. So fast forward to New Year's Eve 2014, I was at a yoga meeting <laughs> and this thought jumped into my head. I'm going to call John, right? Johnny was available, I knew that. Not this John, by the way. Not this really John, John Burroughs. Johnny Burroughs is his name. He's a little friend, somebody I've known from teenage days. His children grew up with my children. Um, his ex-wife is a good friend of mine. Um, anyway, so I called him and I said, I hear you and you are going to the same dinner party that I'm going to. And I'm reserving a seat beside you. And he said, okay. <laughs> he tells me later on that he actually did have a date, but she was a friend. So he figured she would understand. Anyway, so <laughs> and then when we were leaving, I said to him, you know, I'm available if you ever want to go out to dinner um, or to a movie or anything like that. And that was it. We had a date the next week and we've been together ever since. So, yeah. you know, and we were married, by the way. So we were married by Reverend John Scott in July of 2018. Right? So, and I must add something here, you know, he was probably not who I would have envisioned, um, but he is the right and perfect person for me. So something that I've learned is that sometimes we need to leave some of it up to God. You know, yeah. we can't always. Absolutely, yet. yeah. And so God said, all right, I know what you want. You put it out there um, and when the time is right, the right and first son person will be there. And I'm telling you, that's it, right? Yeah. And, you know, nothing is perfect in life, but he is also, he's the type of guy that if something, if I do something that's um, not okay, you know, he can tell me. Or if we have an argument about something and the day after I go and say, Johnny, you know, what, what, what did I do wrong there? What wasn't right about, why did we have that argument? He'll go away, he'll think about it, and he'll come back and say, you know, this is what I think. And mm -hmm. I am confident enough to um, not get defensive because I've asked for his, his help anyway. I've asked for his feedback. And I think that's how we grow. You know, it's the people closest to us that mm -hmm. we can ask for feedback. And yes. know that they're going to give it to us in a very Beautiful. loving way. Yes, yes. Beautiful. So Beautiful. just to, to wrap up for me, you know, the many, um, the, the, the actions, the habits um, have to be intentional. They need to be planted. They need to be nurtured. Um, they need to be, we need to be, for me, I need it to be disciplined, but not rigid. I need to be organized, but still be flexible self-confident, determined, trusting of oneself, and learning how to go with the flow. Now, Sandy and I know that we like to be in control of things, but one thing COVID has taught me, you gotta let go of control yep. and learn how to go with the flow. That has been a very tough lesson. So my intention was and is to live a happy, healthy, joyful, peaceful, productive, successful, prosperous life. Mm -hmm. wow. and I don't need to be any more specific um, about it right now and I needed to put into motion everything in order to accomplish this I needed to let go of fear I need to trust God and universe and I needed to know in my heart of hearts that I truly deserved everything that was good and just quickly about COVID 
um, learning to see the gifts in every single thing. So COVID has taught mm. us a new way of life. Doing this via Zoom, we would not have known how to do that before. COVID has taught me how to go with the flow, live in the moment, um, be centered, be grounded. Many, many lessons, right? Um, and I want to just end by saying that I truly know that everything is in divine order and all mm. is well. I know that in my heart of hearts. And that's why I don't worry about the future. I will still take risk. I will jump off when something feels right. And um, yeah, that's it. Wow, wow. <laughs> Wow. I mean, I, I, I know you Wonderful. so well, but just hearing you articulate um, your life in 15 minutes, it's just been absolutely fantastic. And one thing that strikes me, one thing that comes out, um, comes across very, very strongly is uh, all of us are on this path. Every single one of us, whether we are a practitioner, minister, uh, member, it doesn't matter. We are all on this path and we're all learning and growing. And the fact is that we can come to church on a Sunday morning and hear a fabulous message from Reverend John. But at the end of the this day, can. each one of us has to do the work. I have to do the work. I we love have that. to do the work. And, and um, you, what, that's what you, I, I heard you say throughout. Um, yes, there was courage, but courage is of God. And, mm. and so to tap that in a part of you, to, to um, allow that to drive you, um, you also talked about, um, you know, not just intellectually wanting something, but there was a deep, deep feeling inside of you about this, this thing feeling right, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, you talk about um, everything that you did was just doing the work. Let's, let's have a look at some of the comments we are seeing on the chat. Um, sure. Okay. Um, well, Vance did say, it's interesting what your soul knows before the intellect knows. Absolutely. Yes. No, Absolutely. Knows so much more. And that, that, that is what makes certain things um, resonate. And, and, you know, you know that you're in alignment with your good when there is just this absolute rightness. Yeah. Your soul you knows its own I amness. That's correct. Definitely. He goes on to say, be the person you want to attract into your life. I think he was just commenting on um you're bringing johnny into your space um mm -hmm. you were being that and you know you just decided to embody the character the qualities that you wanted in a in a partner reverend Anne is showing appreciation for all of what you are saying um tamu also resonating so true so true and um sonita um sonia dr sonia saying this is wonderful sharing sonita real truth um, a question from Reverend Anne. Prepare, she says, tell us about preparing oneself for any type of new pursuit. How do you prepare mm. yourself for a new pursuit? So, for example, I plan to retire as executive director of RISE at the end of this year. Um, in preparation for that, I started thinking about how could I do that effectively where RISE would still be successful and I would, um, I would still be productive because I need to be productive in order to be happy. Um, and I, I would say praying about it Looking Number for the one. signs, looking for the opportunities. Let me tell you, the opportunities present themselves, but you have to, you have to open up yourself to the opportunity. You have to listen out. You know, somebody will call you, or you'll see somebody and say, "Hmm, I need to give that person a call." I'm not sure why, but I need to give them a call. Or this, I think the universe, God, always sends signs, but sometimes we're so busy doing mm. what we're doing is we don't see the signs. And so I, in preparation for this new phase of my life, semi and I say semi-retirement because I, mean, I never went to retire really, you know, mm -hmm. but stepping down as ED and, and having another role as just as chairman mm -hmm. um, and consultant, 
I had to put in place the things, the succession planning, finding the right person to take over from me, discussing with my husband, what does our future look like together? So it's the planning, you, you need to plan, um, but looking, okay, so here it is, Reverend Al, what, where do I see myself next year or the year after or five years time? Sometimes I don't know the answer to that. So then I will say, okay, how will it feel? How do I want to feel then? And that's Absolutely. where this whole idea of being in a place of being peaceful, um, being in a happy place. What does a happy place look like? That is actually what it is for me right now. What does my happy place look like? My happy place means I need to be in a comfortable environment. I need to be surrounded by people I love and who love me. I need mm -hmm. to be helping people. I'm always going to want to help people, whether it is in a yoga class or whether it is counseling. I still do addiction counseling, helping a family who has an addict in the family. Um, somebody who's suffering from an anxiety attack and is, is calling on the telephone lifeline, whatever it is. Um, those things uh, that those things are what make me be in my happy place so i would say if we all ask ourselves what it is that puts me in this happy place and and it comes and then just write it down i mean i, I don't it's wonderful to have a diary and write i don't i, I do i have about 20 diaries but i i'm, I'm not i don't write in a diary every day um mm -hmm. but it's a it's a good habit to have and so, yes, if one wants to feel the urge to move on to something new, just ask God, you know, what does that look like? Send on a sign. Uh, I, I am so hearing that divine connection that you have and that you call on. You know, when, you know, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. We, we are not going to experience the, the, the gift if we yes. don't ask for it. So you talk exactly. about, um, you know, if every morning you have a, a practice, you meditate, you pray, you, you perhaps will do some reading. But that really um, sets the tone for your day. It also helps to facilitate, you know, so, you know, it's just like the gardener will do the weed, weeding of the garden. Um, I think to my mind, prayer work weeds the mind and allows for the answer to be to be, um, be revealed through you. You spoke about being open. You know, we can't be open if we have thoughts in our mind about I can't and suppose, and then we're so mired in circumstances. And we have to just listen, um, listen to the urging when we get a, a, a feeling to call someone to take a certain action and, and to look for the signs, I mean, so, so the, the work is continuous. That's what I'm getting. You know, so whether it is success in, in your business, success in your personal life, success in your finances, mm -hmm. the, the, we have to do the work and it's a constant practice. I want to add something. I want to add something that my yoga practice taught me is how to be a yes. witness to oneself. So those of you that have taken my yoga class know that I, I talk about being in the present moment and um, being a witness to oneself. What that means is, so for example, if I'm in a yoga posture, um, I, I, drop, I drop from my thinking center into my feeling center and I say to myself, how does this feel? And actually, so that's where this whole being in my feeling body comes from. A lot of it comes from my yoga practice. And in Amrit Yoga, at the beginning of every class, I always tell students, drop from your thinking center into your feeling center. What does this feel like? How does this feel when you're in this posture? Mm. And being a witness means instead of judging yourself or maybe the person beside you, be a witness to yourself. And I use that during my everyday life. So if I something happens that throws me off, for example, or I see something that sounds really aggressive or whatever. I put myself as a witness and the witness says, come on, Sonny, you can do better than that. So instead of beating up on myself, I'm very self-critical, by the way. And I listen to my thoughts. So you listen to your thoughts 
and uh, you then you be a witness. So when you're a witness, you're not going to beat up on yourself, but you're going to you're going to be able to say, hmm, that's interesting what I did or what I just said. How could I have done this better? Mm. So that's being a witness to one's thoughts. Mm. So that's being a witness without being judgmental. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. Without judging exactly. Your, without judging yourself. Exactly. I'm um, going to the chat. Um, you said something very. I'm oh, sorry, Sandy. Go ahead. Um, no, I'm just going to the chat, Reverend John. So perhaps you could go on, then I'll take the chat comments in. Okay, way. I was just saying, Sunita uh, mentioned about getting to the bottom of our our belief system, and I think that's so important. Um. To, and, and that comes also from being a witness. Witness your reactions, witness how you're feeling. And um, that's where, for me, journaling becomes, becomes um, an exciting thing to do because yeah. it, it brings into sharp focus where you are at. So you don't have to be a slave to it and do it every day, but it really is an interesting exercise to... to Think about where you're you're coming from and where you want to go. Set your intention and write it down. And when you do write it down, I, I think I've been hearing from you too, Sonny. Um, the universe moves into action in a powerful, as you call in it, in an instant. Yes, absolutely. Um, miraculous, all you know, seemingly miraculous way to make it happen. You started with that first car, you know, but it's been it's been kind of the way your life has gone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, all your, so, from what so, you have shared with us so beautifully. So I just wanted to say that, that, but I had that belief that I was worthy. And that's very important too. Because Absolutely. if I didn't think I was worthy of getting that new car, I wouldn't have gotten it. Mm -hmm. I remember doing a prayer session with, oh my goodness, I see his face at the temple. He was just so wonderful. Anyway, and I, this time I was... No, um, come okay. I wanted to manifest this big, beautiful Suzuki Vitara, mm. and he was my prayer, prayer partner. And I said to him, You know, I want this Vitara, but guess what? I, I don't know, I want the big one, I want the fancy one, but my <laughs> issue is how, is how am I going to maintain it? And he said to me, James, James, right? James, James Gardner, yes, James yes. Gardner, yes, and he said to me, My dear. That means what you want to pray for is a fully maintained vehicle. And I went, that's it. And that's what I got. Yes. I never had to pay a penny of maintenance on my beautiful Vitara. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you one more quick thing about that. I was having difficulties. So my faith was still lacking in some way. And I went to Suzuki one evening and I said, you know what? I just, I don't think this thing is going to work. And okay, who was it there that, that worked at Suzuki who was part of the Temple of Light? She was one of the sales managers there. Oh, um, Madri Boro. Madri. And, yes. Madri said to me, and Madri said to me, Sunny, this is an important lesson, guys. Madri said to me, Sunita, no, 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 no. That doesn't sound like you. Come here. We're going to pray about this. And she held my hands and we prayed. And that was it. So sometimes... I mean, you know, we're, we're all going to fall by the wayside, want, want, but there are always people to lift us up. There mm -hmm. always is help available. We just have to open ourselves up to it, expect it, look for it, and gifts come. Just mm -hmm. like the gift of my yoga studio came. Madri said to me, come here, my dear, we're going to pray about this. That Suzuki Vitara is going to be yours. Wow. And that's what did it. You know, um, uh, uh, one very important part of this is, you know, so we do have some real deep-seated um, beliefs, some con some some things that we work with, we've been conditioned with, yes, perhaps since childhood. And I think that the, the the more firmly we are on the spiritual path, you know, we'll have opportunity. I mean, we will. We will end up maybe reacting to something, but in the awareness, in, in being that witness that you speak of, in the awareness that hmm, there's, this is no longer resonant with me, 
-hmm. then I find that more and more the old beliefs keep coming up. They keep mm -hmm. coming up. And as we are able to look at them objectively and say, hmm, you know, why did I think this? Why am I feeling this? In that processing, we're able to, to release them and move on. Um, Steve, uh, and yes, this is a good point. Um, Steve is saying we need to, he's asking that you elaborate on the inner child. I was just going to okay. go to the chat. But that's a comment yes. from Steve, but perhaps we can we can do that. Just so hold that thought. Let me, let me just make sure that I, I don't leave, a, leave anyone out. Um, well, Steve talks about how powerful that you don't question your faith. Uh, Theo asks a question, which I think you answered when he asks, do you believe that yoga has helped you on your spiritual journey or vice versa? Yes, indeed, you, you spoke oh, to yeah. that. Um, oh, definitely. Karen, Karen Ford Warner, awesome and enlightening, Sanita, thank you. And of course, Reverend Ann, clap, clap, thank you, Sanita. Um, and then Steve again, returning to center without berating oneself. And then Courtney mentioned some signs that indicate or confirm your upward movement in spiritual consciousness. So there are two things that we want to ask you to touch. One, um, Steve's comment, elaborate on the inner child. And two, mm -hmm. Courtney's comment, some signs that indicate or confirm your upward movement in spiritual consciousness. Okay, so the first one about the inner child. Um, so that inner child is that wounded child. Many of us um, during childhood have wounds. Some of it, some of them are little, some of them are big. Um, I, when I was age 14, I guess, my parents split up and it was devastating. And uh, um, that's when I became this almost, that the superwoman, the higher achiever, because I, I recognized that in order to, to still remain in school and do well, I had to go overboard because I was in a lot of pain and there was a lot of family pain. Um, and so I needed to, um, I needed some help to, um, heal that inner child. It's that part of us that goes back to childhood. Those childhood wounds is our inner child, Stevie. And so, um, you know, I worked with Louise Hay. I mean, her story was so incredible. I mean, she was sexually abused, molested, she had cancer. And so she's the one I think that really developed this healing of the inner child. And I used her, her tape every morning and every night for years. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what healing the inner child is about. And still mm -hmm. there are times when I might go into meditation and just reach back to that little girl um, mm -hmm. and just put her in my heart. Um, and love her, and love her. I might, be, I might be feeling vulnerable about something, you know? I wanna say, I wanna just go back to, before I answer the other question, Courtney's, about the belief system. We did an exercise at the temple many years ago where in meditation, and it was being led by, I don't remember who, we went into that belief system we went deep into our heart, our soul. And so say, for example, um, my own would have been an insecurity about what, whatever, about money. And we, I would go in and say, where is that coming from? And, I, and we would breathe and we would go deep. And then something would come in and then you say, okay, we need to go beyond that even deeper and deeper and deeper. And I don't remember exactly what the technique was, but it was very interesting because it took us deeper beyond mm -hmm. the conscious, beyond the subconscious mm -hmm. to where that thing started. It might have been something that our parents said to us on one occasion as a child that lodged there. Yes. Okay. Yes. You know, somebody that's being stole, they're stupid and they'll never be successful. That lodge is there if it's told, told by a parent. And a lot of times we bury it deep. 
Well, it was how to bring that up and then how to heal it. Exactly. So that's inner child work. Mm -hmm. um, so, so just, just a bit, you know, before you go on. So something would have happened when we were very young and we made a decision or the pain of that situation sort of just stayed with us and we picked it way into our adult life. And until we can literally bring it back and heal it, we're going to be acting from it over and over again. So the, so the work really is within and upon ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'm doing right now A Course in Miracles, the workbook with Marianne, um, Marianne Robinson, Williamson. She's so awesome. And uh, I just, I don't know, it popped into my inbox one day and I tried to sign up for it. And for some reason, it rejected my visa card. And then, you know, I messaged them. And guess what? They said, you know what? You want to do it so badly. We're going to give you this as a gift. And wow. it's one year. So every morning... Um, I have Marianne on my screen and she's reading mm -hmm. um, and it's just such incredible truths. So this is why I mentioned that to say that the work never ends. That's the right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And I think what sets the, te what sets the temple of light um, apart from so many other churches or religions or teachings is those classes that you do. I mean, they're just so powerful. So I think over the past 20 years, I've taken so many, many classes at the temple. That's why I'm where I am today. Mm -hmm. awesome. And I can't remember awesome. what Courtney's question was. Yes, well, I'm gonna go in a little bit. We have about five minutes left. Let me just go back. He says, hmm, what are some signs that indicate or confirm your upward movement in spiritual consciousness? They just, um, okay, so remember I, I said, um, so, all right, I'm going to re retire in December, okay? Um, in order to do that, I need to find the, the right and perfect person to take off from me. The right and perfect person dropped in my lap. Um, I want to remain as a consultant, um, if it's possible, because I'd like to still continue to earn some money. Mm -hmm. it, I just got that validation today. We've got two big EU grants, and so it'll be no issue me staying on as a consultant. So, mm -hmm. so, so when, when you have put in motion what it is you want to do, um, that's your intention. It, yeah, it comes. It just comes. You need to pay attention. That's what it is. You need to pay attention, Courtney. That's what it is. You put it in your heart. You know, you kind of know what, what you want out there. Um, and if you're not sure what it is, then you need to know the feeling that you want. You want to be in a feeling of contentment, of being secure, of being safe, whatever that feeling is. And then the universe brings it to you. You just need to pay attention because the signs are there, loud and clear. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wow. 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 Oh, let's just see what, what else we have here. Mm, I think that, that touches on everything that we have in the chat. You know, uh, we have a, perhaps another five or so minutes, you know, but I, I know for sure, you know, because we don't have work together. We, have, we share birth signs together. We celebrated some of our birthdays together. And so, I mean, so much of what you have said in, the, in our conversation this evening resonates with me. That the, but primarily we have to do the work, you know? And so I'm just saying to all of our friends that are listening that, you know, it, it sounds nice when we hear Reverend John, Reverend Anne, or one of us practitioners speak, we, we have to go home and do the work you know, to devote the time to spiritual practice, to come to class, because through classes, we get the clarity, we get the explanations, we get to delve more deeply into the, the some of the, the messages that are shared on us on the morning, we get to understand where they're coming from, what does the principle mean, and how we can really and truly apply these principles to our lives. I see something else in the chat. Um, I think of you as a, ah, just a comment to you um, from so Dr. Sonia. I think of you as a pioneer, willing to be out front, willing to go after causes because they are popular as an either. 
as an idea, I'm sure that she, that's what she means. What is mm -hmm. the constant, what is the constant, consistent urge that you are satisfying? Ah, and now I have it in con context. Mm -hmm. Think of you as a pioneer, willing to be out front, willing to go after causes that are popular as an idea. What is the constant, consistent urge that you are satisfying? This perhaps could be our last question. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I, I need to help people. I need to be able to inspire people. You know, the work that I do in inner city Kingston has been the biggest joy of my life. And I want to tell you where that started quickly. I was, I used to work in the gun court with Father Richard Holong, and I was a counselor as a young woman in my thirties. And I discovered God in every single human being. And I realized that when, when you treat people with respect, I mean, they'll, and love, um, they're, they're just, it's, healing begins immediately. So I work with inner city children. It's my biggest joy. Um, they can turn their life around. They're so resilient. And uh, that's why I was led to the helping profession. And even in my yoga classes and my Pilates classes, I'm a teacher and I love to teach and I love to share and I love to inspire. And that's what keeps me going. I want to say one thing. This is my, I'll be 70 this year. And you know, I, I mean, sometimes I say, oh my God, am I really going to be 70? But you know, it's, it's just um, a joy. I don't feel, I'm, I'm very proud of my age. Um, and I, um, I am in the twilight. I am at a, such a good place in my life. Yeah. And I feel very fortunate to be here um, at this time. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a gift. Yes. It's a real awesome. gift. Absolutely. You know, um, I, you know, there's another question that is coming through me, which I said, you know, let me ask, because I hear that loud and clear. And we, um, I'm a few years behind you, but the question still comes, you know, and then the race belief about, oh my God, you're getting old now and so on. But being in the temple has really made such a tremendous difference to just a sense of agelessness and timelessness. But um, just a, a last question for you. You know, the temple is about to, we have just launched what we call our 12 week prosperity adventure that's going to be taking place in January, from January to, to, to May, sorry, Sandra, from January to March of 2022. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a quick, in a, in a nutshell, what is so special about having a prosperity consciousness? What, what, what would, what, why would you encourage, what would make you encourage persons to participate in this program from a consciousness perspective? Wow. Um, I would say that everybody wants to be prosperous because prosper and prosperity means different things for different people because prosperity brings comfort. It brings peace of mind. For me, one of the reasons why I wanted to be prosperous was to be able to share with others, mm -hmm. right? So that, um, I could share this prosperity with others. That was really important to me. And um, a prosperity um, consciousness means that you are in this happy place because mm -hmm. prosperity is not just about money. I mean, it, you know, money doesn't make anybody happy. It's really about good health, um, happiness, joy, uh, peace of mind. That is prosperity. And in order to have peace of mind and a joyful heart and a, a, a good life. Mm -hmm. There needs, to, your bills have to be paid, taken care of. Yeah, you yeah. need to know how you can pay your mortgage. You need to know how you can maintain your car. So for me, um, financial mm -hmm. prosperity is just a means to an end. It's a means to being in that comfortable, happy place where I don't have to worry about money. Am I going to be able to buy food next year or, in, or five years? I, I don't want to ever have to worry about that. That's what it's all about. Okay, awesome. Get into that happy place because you know that those main things in your life are taken care of and you don't have to be concerned about that because you're doing the work. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Awesome. Beautifully said. And perhaps mm -hmm. this is uh, it's a high point on which to wrap up our, our evening this evening. Wow, it was such a delight to have had you, Sunita. And I'm going to ask um, 
Um, Love Ed, would you do our vote of thanks and our wrap up, please? And then um, we turn back over to you. Go ahead. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Sonita, um, I don't know where this hour has gone, <laughs> but I would, I, would, I would spend another two hours or three or four or a whole day in your presence, just basking in the, in the radiance of your presence. Uh, the light that you bring, uh, the energy and the and the, the deep commitment uh, to your own beingness. It it has been really, to quote Karen Ford Warner, awesome and enlightening. Just listening to you, I am particularly moved. And both of us share uh, an alma mater, Johns Hopkins. You know, and and our stories are almost identical because that's where I got my masters too. And it's again without any money. Or any 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 kind of consideration for that, you set your intention, and the universe moves to support you. So I was very very moved by your comment on your faith that it's it's unshakable, and mm -hmm. also your belief in your worthiness that you know you deserve because you are a beloved of of the infinite, invisible. Um, that is at the center of everybody's life. If we could just get everybody to embrace that, what a wonderful world we'd be living in. So thank you for that. Thank you for the reassurance that the work has to be done. Because a lot of times, you know, people say, oh, well, you know her, she born with gold spoon in her mouth. You have been working, as you have said, for 30 years. And that's a real inspiration for all of us. You are indeed a teacher par excellence. You are indeed an inspiration. And I just want to thank you on behalf of all those that you have touched this evening, to thank you on behalf of your spiritual family at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, to thank you on behalf of your students at AFIA, awesome yoga classes, um, which I want to recommend to anybody and everybody who wants to integrate mind, body, and spirit in a, in a practice. And I want to thank our technical team and our moderator, Sandra. And above all, I want to thank God for giving you as a precious gift to life. Namaste. Namaste. Oh, thank you, Reverend John. And Sunita, you do us a great, wonderful blessing to, to just do our closing affirmative prayer. Okay, so as we give thanks this evening, we give thanks for God, for that one source, love. We give thanks for our Temple of Light family, knowing how important um, community is at this time. We give thanks for each and every one of us, what we bring to the table, what we share together, knowing that we are divine sons and daughters of God, knowing mm -hmm. that as we go in peace, everything is in divine order and everything is exactly as it is supposed to be. Knowing that this is the truth, this is the truth about us, this is the truth about this wonderful spiritual journey that we're all on together. Giving thanks for the Temple of Light, giving thanks for Reverend John, giving thanks for all the practitioners and just knowing that we're one and that all is well. All is well. Namaste. Namaste. And Namaste. so it is beautiful. Oh, okay. beautiful. oh, I love you. Thank you all so much for being part of this journey and have a delightful and divine evening. Thank you. And thank you for being part of my spiritual family. I know sometimes you all don't see me, but, um, but you know I'm here. I'm here in spirit. I'm, I'm here with you all. You are my family. No bless you. Me. Bless you, bless you. Namaste. Namaste.